Chapter 161, Book of Blasphemy and Holy Mage Bobo walked over and sized up Suya curiously. She could not help but say enviously, what white toes. Wow, you're really tall. To Matthew's surprise, Suya's attitude towards Bobo was unexpectedly calm. She smiled gently at Shorty. Thank you. You're very cute too. Bobo jumped up excitedly. Did you hear that, Matthew? Even the soul of the rainforest praised me for being cute. She really has good taste. Because she had just done a good job in boxing, Matthew couldn't be perfunctory, so he praised her a little. The blue light on Bobo's helmet was about to burst out from the light bulb. At this moment, Lumiere walked over. Suya suddenly became serious. She sat upright on the throne, and her temperament instantly changed from an amiable big sister next door to a high and mighty queen. They took the verdant branch. That black-robed man, Blinken of the Dragon Lich Cult, used the Book of Blasphemy to weaken my power and forcefully pried open the door to the Black Banyan Dream. He perfectly seized the moment when I was at my weakest. Before that, I was preparing the advancement ritual of the War Beasts. The ritual hadn't succeeded yet, and I had lost a lot of energy, so I gave them an opportunity. As soon as she finished speaking, two rings of white light lit up on the altar in front of the throne. Everyone focused their eyes. Lying in the white light were the phantoms of Dinosauruses and winged dragon wind gods that had shrunk many times. Matthew understood. The war beast was a supernatural soul of nature. Only Lord Tear monsters that tore apart all competitors and crushed their peers in the natural world had the chance to become a war beast. Using the Dinosauruses as an example, after they were promoted to war beasts by Suyi, they became the guardians of the Black Banyan's dream realm. It could survive for as long as the Black Banyan's dream realm could. At the same time, War beasts could retain most of their strength when they were alive. They even had the opportunity to reconstruct their physical bodies, unlike most natural souls that existed in the form of spirits, which always had some defects since they lacked a physical body. Correspondingly, the promotion of war beasts consumed a lot of energy for the host of the ceremony, not to mention Suya was promoting two at the same time. Matthew looked straight into Suya's eyes, but the latter's expression did not change. However, Matthew realized that Suya might have predicted the impending crisis, which was why she had allowed the two lords, the winged dragon wind god and the dinosauruses, to die in his and Lumiere's hands. Because only then would she have the opportunity to hold the warbeast advancement ceremony for them. In hindsight, there was nothing wrong with this choice. Since Blinken could directly pry open the door to the Black Banyan's dream, all of this had nothing to do with the rainforest's ecological niche in the material world. It could only be said that Blinken had been plotting for a long time, and he was very decisive, seizing the opportunity perfectly. Matthew was about to ask for some details when he suddenly felt a pain in the back of his foot as if someone had stepped on him heavily. However, the control of his strength was extremely perfect, causing Matthew to feel a slight pain, but not to the extent of screaming. After the pain, there was a small numbness. Matthew frowned as he stared at Suyi. The latter's gaze was calm and her aura was dignified, as if she was a god that was accepting believers on a pilgrimage. When Matthew saw this, he began to wonder if she was the one who had stepped on him. However, this was Black Banyan's dream realm. Who else could it be other than her? What exactly is the Book of Blasphemy? Fortunately, his friend Bobo asked Matthew's question. The Book of Blasphemy is a true divine artifact. In theory, Blinken only has one-fifth of it so it can only have the effect of a semi-divine artifact. Fifty years ago, this semi-divine weapon was still hidden in a secret vault of the Seven Saint Alliance. However, at that time, Blinken was already one of the guards of the secret vault. He had long coveted the remnant page of the Book of Blasphemy, so he deliberately designed a series of schemes. In the end, he successfully escaped with the remnant page and went to the Dragon Lich Cult. The one who answered everyone's questions was not Suyi. It was a young man who was slowly walking out from the shadows under the banyan tree. He was very thin and short. His skin was dark, but his teeth were very white. When he smiled, he gave people a very shy feeling. Hi, everyone. My name is Zaili, and I'm from the Secret Intelligence Department of the Seven Saint Alliance. I'm an ace spy, and my job is to keep an eye on the dragon lich cult in the desert. I stutter a little. I get nervous when people look at me. Thank you. Zaiyuyi finished the two sentences as if he were reciting his lines. Suya helped to introduce him. I've known Zaiyuyi for many years. He was always active in the desert. 
Before the Dragon Lich Cult attacked, he came to warn me, but Blinken came too quickly, giving me less than an hour to react. Xiaoyi turned his head and didn't look at anyone. He said smoothly. It's not your fault, Master Suyi. Blinken is the third most powerful person in the Dragon Lich Cult. His strength is unbelievably strong, and no one knows that he will suddenly go crazy. Uh, everyone, if you don't mind, let me introduce the background of the Dragon Lich Cult first. The group of people were curious, to begin with, so they naturally nodded. Only Matthew's nod was a little slow. Because just now. He felt another foot rubbing against the back of his foot. This time, it wasn't a stomp. But it seemed more torturous than stepping. Is it Suye? What is this woman doing? She has just lost her verdant branch. She can't be in the mood to flirt with me. Chapter 162, Book of Blasphemy and Holy Mage Matthew's mind was in a mess. However, he soon listened attentively. The Dragon Lich Cult originated from the worship of the Dragon of the Dead, Ariana, but in fact, Ariana hated them very much. She once personally said to the person in charge of negotiating with the Alliance of Seven Saints, If it's possible, I hope that I'm the only Dragon Lich in this world. I enjoy loneliness and don't yearn for my own kind because having too many of my own kind means competition. I'd rather lie in my grave every day and count flies than have a few more dragon liches in the world. Although this sentence was said in the context of Ariana trying to distance herself from the dragon worship sect. We think it has a certain degree of authenticity. Ariana was just a spiritual icon used by the dragon lich cult to attract believers. Their real leader was actually a mage named Isabel. Speaking of which, I have no choice but to reveal my family's dirty laundry. Lady Isabel, as the teacher of the current guardian of the South, Mr. Ronan, was once the previous generation's heavenly mage of the Seven Saint. Alliance. Her level was above level 30, which was also the legendary Holy Mage. Yes, she was a traitor of the Seven Saint Alliance. This was also one of the reasons why the Seven Saint Alliance had yet to destroy the Dragon Lich sect. We don't know why the former heavenly mage and the guardian of the human race betrayed us. Fortunately, although Isabel was crazy, she was not too evil. The Alliance had paid a huge price to stop her. After a few difficult battles, we eliminated a considerable number of members of the Dragon Lich sect. Isabel was also convinced and took the initiative to confine herself. The Alliance's higher UPS had people accompanying her day and night. We could say that her mental state is still okay. The Dragon Lich sect that we're looking at now is mainly controlled by two mages. They were once Lady Isabel's favorite students. Blinken, whom I'm monitoring, is mainly responsible for the activities of this cult in the South. He was very cunning and appeared and disappeared like a ghost. The Alliance sent people to capture him a few times, but he escaped. This time, I caught a clue about him. I only dared to hide in the dark and wait for the follow-up orders from my superiors. According to my observations, before attacking the rainforest, Blinken had been in the desert. He had been patiently chatting with the Blue Dragon every day, trying to persuade it to join the Dragon Lich sect after its life was exhausted. However, the Blue Dragon was only greedy for the money of the Dragon Lich sect. It refused to sign the contract after receiving money several times. Blinken was already very angry. However, Blue Dragon was shameless, timid, and cautious. He could not do anything to him. Blinken was indeed quite capable. While he was dealing with the Blue Dragon in the desert, he did not forget to set up the Dragon Lich sect's businesses in the city. He was very business-minded. Casinos, brothels, magic shops. Under his management, the Dragon Lich sect's businesses flourished. Many local tyrants in the Gold Coast tried to find trouble with them, but in the end, they could not do anything. He spent most of his time in the desert fighting the Blue Dragon. This was truly admirable. I thought this situation would continue until Blue Dragon or Blinken made their move. However, some time ago, I received a message from an insider from the Dragon Lich sect. He told me that. A member of the Dragon Lich sect was in a tavern in Condor City when he accidentally heard a drunkard say that they had found a giant dragon's tomb in the rainforest and that they were going to be rich. The member of the Dragon Lich sect verified that the drunkard was a mid-level leader of the Sandstorm Bandits. Ever since that day, the Sandstorm Bandits began to have internal strife. After that, Blinken asked around and somehow concluded that there was a dragon's tomb in the rainforest. After all, the Book of Blasphemy had records on how to advance as dragon liches. One requires a large number of dead dragon skeletons. The news of the dragon's tomb directly stimulated Blinken. 
he almost immediately gave the order to temporarily give up on negotiating with the Blue Dragon and mobilized a large amount of resources to the edge of the rainforest. He was cutting down trees and building factories. They probably knew that they would encounter resistance from the rainforest creatures and were prepared to fight to the death with you. The Tomb of the Giant Dragon? Matthew and the other two looked at each other, feeling somewhat baffled. He recalled the members of the Order of Calamity and the Sandstorm Bandits who had appeared at the shore of the Great Dragon Lake that day. He couldn't help but wonder if Blinken had made a mistake. Could he have mistaken the Bright Sandalwood King's tomb for the Tomb of the Giant Dragon? This is too ridiculous. Matthew thought about it, and the strange feeling on his calf came again. After trying to adjust his posture and move forward and backward to no avail, he could only use his willpower to resist the numbness in his calves forcefully. On the throne. Suya rested her chin on one hand and crossed her legs. Her left leg was stacked on top of her suede, and her fair little foot unconsciously pressed forward. Her expression was innocent and holy. This made Matthew speechless. He did not understand why Suya did this, so he could only silently endure the humiliation. In short, according to my intelligence, the Dragon Lich sect has temporarily allied with the Order of Calamity from the Underdark. The two sides have reached a certain agreement, and the people of the Order of Calamity seem to be very interested in the legendary Tomb of the Dragon. Xiaoyi said with assurance, as for the situation with the Sandstorm Bandits, I don't know. At this point, his expression and tone became very sincere. No matter what, Blinken's actions must be stopped. Not to mention what will happen when he finds the Dragon's Tomb. Before that, the safety of the rainforest creatures and the Black Banyan Dream will be in huge danger. According to the procedure, this matter should have been handled by my superior. However, there has been some kind of malfunction in the Alliance recently, and all communication rituals can't be used. I'm just a spy without combat power. I had no choice but to ask for help from others. Now, I officially represent the Alliance of Seven Saints to entrust you with a task. Can you help stop Blinken's actions? It would be even better if you could kill him or capture him. The Alliance of Seven Saints has never been stingy with rewards. I can guarantee that after the mission is successful, you will at least receive a magical equipment or item with a rating of L2 or above. Matthew was about to agree. However, he heard a delicate voice beside his ear, Don't do it. Chapter 163, Why Am I Still Leveling Up? Why? Matthew asked the voice in his heart. However, the other party did not answer. Matthew looked up at Suyi, who was sitting on the throne with a divine expression. It was as if Xiaoyi's mission or the voice in Matthew's heart had nothing to do with her. What is this? Is she still going to put on the airs of the soul of the rainforest? Matthew suddenly laughed in his heart. Because she couldn't bring herself to ask for help to expel the Dragon Lich sect, so she simply used the name of the Seven Saint Alliance. He saw through it very clearly. Xiaoyi was definitely from the Alliance of Seven Saints, but his mission was to recon. Based on what Xiaoyi said, he couldn't contact the Alliance and, therefore, shouldn't have the right to issue any missions. In this way, the real client of this mission was obvious. As he thought about this, Matthew's smile had a hint of mockery. However, he soon stopped smiling. Because the little foot that had been rubbing against him suddenly kicked him at a position that was quite fatal. At that time, Matthew almost hissed and keeled over. In the next second, Matthew met Bobo's suspicious gaze. Are you actually daydreaming? Hurry up and say your opinion. We've already expressed our stance. Matthew coughed and looked at Xiaoyi apologetically. I'm sorry, I was indeed a little distracted just now. What did you guys say? Bobo said unhappily. Lumiere and I have decided to accept his request. It's better for the people of the Dragon Lich sect to go to hell sooner or later. However, at the same time, we would like to hear your opinion. After all, in terms of cunning, I'm afraid we are not as good as necromancers. Lumiere nodded in agreement with Bobo. Both of them looked at Matthew. The latter immediately muttered. I need more information. The current information doesn't allow me to make a judgment. Blinken is a level 20 necromancer. He's too dangerous. Xiaoyi immediately said. In fact, that's just his level on the surface. Blinken has been oppressed by the Book of Blasphemy for a long time, and his strength has dropped quite a bit. Now, he had to spend a portion of his power to suppress that semi-divine weapon at all times, so his true combat strength was only around level 18. If you think that tracking Blinken is difficult, I can provide a little help in this regard. This is my job. 
As he spoke, he took out a chubby and round little elf from a small cloth pocket at his waist. Then, he knelt on one knee and placed the little elf on the ground. I don't know, I don't know. After the little elf landed, she immediately revealed a pitiful expression. Its skin was light blue, and there were water ripples flowing on it. Be good, little Biu Biu. It won't hurt very much. Xiaoyi said gently. The little elf immediately covered her eyes with her hands, but her hands were too short. She could only cover the corners of her eyes. The rest of her eyes were watery, and she looked very pitiful. Xiaoyi raised his right palm and slapped the elf's forehead. At the same time, he shouted the name of the dragon lich sex priest, Blinken. The little elf was smashed into pieces by the slap, and its body turned into a huge puddle of water. In the middle of the water stain, a clear image quickly appeared. The light of dawn penetrated the dense rainforest and hit the huge banana leaves. A few crystal clear dewdrops could be seen rolling back and forth on the leaves. Suddenly, a large hand pushed the banana leaf away impatiently, and the dew immediately rolled down from the edge. The camera quickly moved up and then looked down at the sparse team from a high position. They were the Dragon Lich sect people. Looking down from this angle, the composition of the team could be seen at a glance. The black-robed man, Blinken, was walking at the front. Behind him were four well-equipped dragon blood warriors, followed by more than twenty dragon worship disciples in brown robes. The members of the fourth echelon were all ground fire dragons, and the one in charge of driving them away was a dragon blood warrior at the back. The entire army was orderly as they passed through the rainforest. Even the earth fire dragon, which was the most prone to making mistakes, appeared to be extremely intelligent. It could be seen that Blinken had put in a lot of effort in managing the team. As they walked, the black-robed man suddenly raised a hand. Stop! There were nearly 200 units in the team, and they were in the complex terrain of the rainforest. However, with a single order from Blinken, every unit stopped in place within two seconds. Matthew saw a fire dragon sink into the mud because of the sudden break. But even so, it did not move at all, allowing the mud to drown its fat body gradually. Blinken looked around and said coldly. Rest for eight minutes. Next, prepare for battle. With that, he rushed in front of the ground fire dragon and pulled it out of the mud. Too careless. Blinken seemed to be reprimanding him sternly, but in the next second, he cast a cleanse on the fire dragon. The fire dragon howled and kissed Blinken's shoes. The atmosphere gradually relaxed. Everyone was resting on the spot. Only Blinken himself kept walking back and forth. His eyes occasionally looked around and occasionally swept across the crowd. Chapter 164, Why Am I Still Leveling Up? Suddenly, his gaze paused on a Dragon Lich Sect disciple for three seconds before he walked quickly toward him. The Dragon Lich Sect disciple panicked. He stood up from the ground and was about to say something when Blinken grabbed his collar. In the next second, Blinken carefully tidied the creases on his collar and adjusted the angle of the Dragon Lich Sect badge on his chest. Remember, no matter how big the crisis is, humans must not panic and must not forget to take care of their appearance. This is the biggest difference between humans and animals. Next time, if I find out that there's a problem with the angle of your batch, I'll expel you from the Dragon Lich sect immediately. The believer opened his mouth in excitement. Lord Blinken, I, I. Blinken helped him tidy up his appearance and patted his shoulder. Don't talk. Do your job well. After saying that, he quickly left and looked elsewhere. A few minutes later, Blinken led his team and set off again. This time, the camera couldn't keep up with them. Instead, it watched them leave the forest and arrive at a relatively open highland. On the ground, the water droplets slowly disappeared. From a large puddle at the beginning, it gradually became a small ball. In the end, all the water droplets merged into a round ball of meat. Buzzy, buzzy. The little elf stood with her hands on her hips angrily as if she was scolding Xiaoyi. Xiaoyi, who was prepared, immediately took out a lead block from his waist and handed it over. The elf grabbed the lead and swallowed it. The lead appeared in its translucent stomach, and bubbles popped out. The elf burped in satisfaction, and the lead disappeared at a speed visible to the naked eye. Buzzy is a scouting elf, but its scouting method is a little tragic. Xiaoyi smiled shyly and put away the elf. Matthew nodded. Those images were indeed very clear, and they were not detected by Blinken, who was a quasi legend. This meant that the elf's investigative ability was very high. He extracted three pieces of information from the previous image. First, 
Blinken was indeed a strong leader. The evil camp's people were often difficult to train, but he could make every subordinate obey orders obediently. Although there was a reason for his strength, Blinken's personal charm and management skills also accounted for a large proportion. The underground Allied Army of the Order of Calamity was nothing more than a bunch of wandering soldiers in front of Blinken's troops. Secondly, Blinken seemed to have a very serious obsessive-compulsive disorder. It was no wonder that he was so angry at Suya's slip of the tongue when he withdrew from the Black Banyan Dream. Thirdly, after leaving the Black Banyan Dream, the direction of the march seemed familiar. Matthew thought for a while and confirmed that the highland they were about to reach was the place where he had fought alongside Old Lucky and Lorraine. It was the edge of the Bitter Water Swamp. Judging from his posture, it seemed that he was going deep into the Bitter Water Swamp. If Matthew did not know that the former owner of the swamp was called Danya, he would have really associated Blinken with the legendary necromancer. What's the use of the verdant branch? Matthew asked Sulye. Sulye said calmly. It's one of the foundational items of the rainforest. With it, the Dragon Lich sect disciples can move freely in the rainforest to a certain extent, reducing the risk of encountering poisonous insects and beasts. At the same time, it's also a natural divine item. It's something that druids, rangers, and nature. Souls dream of. Matthew thought for a moment. So, Blinken snatched the verdant branch to fight a protracted war in the rainforest. He didn't intend to attack with one fell swoop, or rather, he didn't have the ability. Zihuyi echoed. What you said is very reasonable. Blinken is a very smart person. He never does anything impulsive. This sudden intrusion into the rainforest is the most impulsive thing I've ever seen him do, but he handled it in an orderly manner. To be honest, if he weren't an enemy of the Alliance, I would want to be friends with him. Matthew nodded slightly. To be able to make the scout sincerely admire him, Blinken was not simple. This kind of brave and resourceful enemy was the most troublesome. Unless it was absolutely necessary, Matthew was not willing to make him an enemy. My suggestion is that we can track Blinken and try to stop him from destroying the rainforest. If we had the chance, I would even be willing to negotiate with him. The best option would be to persuade him to leave the rainforest without using force. Matthew explained seriously. A level 20 mage is already very powerful. Blinken used to work in the Seven Saint Alliance and defected to the Dragon Lich sect. It wasn't that I lacked the courage to fight, but that I didn't want anything to happen to anyone present. Of course, if negotiation is not possible, then force will be necessary. I believe that with our strength and cooperation, killing him is not impossible. Zihuyi thought for a moment. But how do you plan to persuade him? Although Blinken was very smart, he was also very stubborn. He had already determined that the dragon's tomb really existed, so he would never give up. Matthew asked. Don't you think it's strange? I'm referring to the news about the dragon's tomb and the sandstorm bandits. Chapter 165, Why Am I Still Leveling Up? Zihuyi was taken aback before turning serious. Please share with us. Matthew turned to Bobo. I remember Yu Lian telling us that day that the sandstorm bandits had recently erupted into internal strife. Both sides have been constantly fighting in the city, but in the end, they have mistaken their targets several times. The ones who died were all outsiders, right? Bobo nodded vigorously. Matthew chuckled. The bandit gang got the wrong target? You must be joking. I can understand if they are a knight regiment or a warrior regiment but I can't understand how a bandit regiment that is famous for intelligence investigation and accurate assassination could get their targets wrong. Realization dawned on Bobo. So that fatty lied to us. Zihuyi coughed when he heard that. Uh, he probably didn't lie to you. I've also verified this information. It's true. The places where both sides exchanged fire were both inside and outside the city of Condor, and most of the people who died were indeed outsiders who were accidentally involved. Matthew gave a direct conclusion. I think that the internal strife of the sandstorm bandits might be an act. Yulian once told me that, other than me, he also sold the news of the seabed tomb to another group. This means that someone might be interested in the seabed tomb, but he did not dare to take the risk. Therefore, he found the sandstorm bandits and put on an act. His ultimate goal was to encourage the dragon lich sect to scout the way first. Of course, this was only one of the guesses. There were many different situations, and my guesses had many loopholes. For example, if the Dragon Lich sect was strong enough to take down the seabed tomb, the mastermind might not get anything. This would not work. For example, 
it was doubtful that such a smart Blinken would take the bait. Just because of the internal strife of the sandstorm bandits. In short, there are indeed many loopholes in this matter. We haven't found out the truth yet, but we can use these to negotiate with Blinken first. From the way he snatched the verdant branch and left the Black Banyan dream realm in time, it could be seen that he was a rational person. As long as he was rational, no matter how evil he was, he could still negotiate. After saying this, Matthew was a little thirsty, so he picked a leaf and twisted it into a funnel shape. He rubbed a glass of water for himself and asked everyone as he drank. What do you think? Celia rested her chin on her hand as she looked at Matthew with relish. She also crossed her legs. Lumiere shook his head silently. Bobo seemed to have entered a standstill state. Only Zihuyi exclaimed. Your thinking is really clear. You can grasp so many key points at once. I think you're more qualified to be a spy than me. Why didn't such an outstanding mage like you join the Seven Saint Alliance? Matthew smiled modestly. If it were any other mage, they might be able to analyze it more thoroughly than I do. The few of them discussed for a while. In the end, even Surya tacitly agreed to Matthew's plan. Matthew let the others rest for a while. He said that he needed to find a place to write two letters. Although he was confident in his plan, he was also worried that he was too young and inexperienced. The plan he formulated might have hidden dangers. Therefore, he decided to write a letter to ask the experienced big shots. Originally, Master Ronan was the best advisor. It was a pity that he wasn't here. Matthew was going to write to Zeller, hoping that his seniors, including Zeller, Richard, and Lee Weeke, could give him some advice. The other letter was intended for Peggy. Although he had completed his advancement, it was obviously not Matthew's style to leave the matter of the Dragon Lich sect alone. As a result, he might stay in the South for more than a month, and he would have to remind Peggy of many things. The content that he was about to write went through his mind. Matthew took out a letter and a pen from his bag. At this moment, Suya's voice sounded in his ear. Follow me. Then, Matthew saw a beautiful figure quickly disappear into the forest on his left. He stood up and walked in that direction without batting an eyelid. However, Matthew did not know that Bobo and Lumiere, who had long since noticed his abnormality, saw this scene. The two of them looked at each other and then looked at the throne. However, there was no trace of the soul of the rainforest on the throne. Lumiere had a complicated look on his face and did not speak. Bobo suddenly asked, if a human and a nature soul mate, will she give birth to a human or a nature soul? Lumiere was stunned. Uh, they shouldn't have reached this level, right? Bobo looked at him in disdain. Are you blind? Lumiere scratched his head in embarrassment. Sorry, this question is beyond my knowledge. I really don't know what will happen. After all, I'm just a country bumpkin who hasn't left the rainforest much. Bobo said seriously, please don't say that. Lumiere's heart warmed. In the next second. Bobo said seriously, country bumpkins might even have more knowledge than you. Lumiere's face stiffened. Here, this one is for you. Don't be dejected anymore. Bobo randomly took out a colorful candy and an alarm clock from her bag. She placed the alarm clock on the ground and patted the button on it. The clock's needle slowly moved. Then she handed the colorful candy to Lumiere. I'll treat you to a smart candy. You'll become smarter after eating it. Lumiere gratefully accepted the candy, but he did not eat it but put it in his pocket close to his chest. Chapter 166, Why Am I Still Leveling Up? After doing all this, Bobo began to polish her armor silently. Lumiere pointed at the alarm clock on the floor and asked. What are you doing? Oh, to time Matthew. Bobo replied casually. Aren't you curious how long it'll take him to write letters, I mean? In the small forest. Suya casually set up a hazy barrier. She elegantly walked to a round tree stump and stopped. She turned around and looked at Matthew. You can write here. But before that, I have to ask you. Why didn't you listen to my advice? Her expression became stern and fierce as if the irritable soul of the rainforest had returned. Matthew said calmly. Someone has to deal with the matters of the Dragon Lich sect. Suya said coldly. Lumiere can take care of them. Matthew shook his head and said. This is too dangerous. I can't let him go alone. Suya paced back and forth angrily with a dark face. A moment later, she suddenly sighed. The anger on her face disappeared and was replaced by a deep worry. 
she closed her legs and slowly sat on the tree stump. I'm very weak now. The Book of Blasphemy has contaminated the source of the Black Banyan's dream. I need to spend a lot of energy to purify it. I need someone to protect me, Matthew. This was the first time Matthew saw a pleading look in Suya's eyes. Matthew muttered. If it's just protection, Lumiere or anyone else can do it. No Suya said decisively, I don't trust him. Matthew was stunned for a moment. He had thought about the various reasons why Suya looked at him differently, but he did not expect her to give such a reason. I came from the rainforest myself, so I know very well what is engraved in the blood of every creature here. I trust none of them equally, including your partner Lumiere. Suya said coldly. Matthew didn't refute her. He was just thinking about whether her words were correct or not. I am only the soul of the rainforest, not the god of the rainforest. Suya said softly, do you think I like to pretend to be hot-tempered every day? But if I didn't do this, they would immediately think that I was weak. I will be instantly pushed down and destroyed. Today, when the Dragon Lich sect attacked the Black Banyan Dream Realm, I summoned many animals, but I didn't summon the patterned giant crocodile. Do you know why? I'm afraid that it will eat me when it comes in. Trust me, it won't miss this opportunity. It was not the only one. Dinosauruses and winged dragon wind gods were the same. Every ferocious beast in the rainforest cherished the opportunity to climb up the food pyramid. Therefore, I can only feel a sense of security after they die and advance into war beasts. Because I was born surrounded by wolves. Matthew. Can you understand this feeling? Matthew looked over. Suya's expression was still very stubborn, but there were tears in her eyes. Lumiere is not that kind of person, I believe, Matthew said. Suya smiled. You believe? That sounds like you have been convinced by me. Matthew did not disagree. Then why do you trust me, he asked. Because you come from a civilized world, and you have the recognition of the oak forest. Suya said softly. Oak is not great, but she has always been very accurate in judging people. Even if the oak forest related to you has not officially become a nature's soul, I still believe her judgment. After Matthew heard this, he roughly understood Suya's current situation. However, he still looked apologetic. But I can't let them go alone. I'm worried about their safety. Suya looked at him bitterly. So you don't worry about my safety? Matthew scratched his head. How about I leave a bone dragon with you? Get lost. Suya's expression suddenly changed. Who wants your bone dragon, stinky necromancer? You and your summoned creatures better stay far away from me. I don't want your protection. Matthew raised his eyebrows. He realized Suya's little trick, but he did not point it out. He only smiled playfully. It's not a good thing to throw a tantrum at the soul of the rainforest now. At her all, you've already exposed your weakness. Not willing to be outdone, Suya slapped the tree stump between her legs with her right hand. Come on. Come at me if you have the ability. Aren't you going to write a letter? I'll just sit here and not leave. Or you can go right somewhere else. Or you can move me away from here. If you're a man, you'll know which to choose. Matthew immediately rushed over. After a while, he successfully subdued Suya from an extremely tricky angle. Suya was forced to half kneel in front of the tree stump, her face filled with disbelief. Matthew said leisurely, Well, this is perfect. I'll dictate, and you write for me. He slapped the letter and quill on the stump. Suya immediately screamed, Are you still a man? Matthew said calmly, so, will you write for me? Suya gave up and said, fine. I'll write. Let go. Matthew let go of her hand cautiously. Suya begrudgingly went to grab the quill and letter. What do you want me to write? Suya suppressed her anger. Matthew cleared his throat. Darling Zeller. Darling. Suya raised her head and almost dropped her quill. Matthew pressed her head down. Just write. Don't ask too many questions. Suya snorted lightly. Her face was slightly red as she obediently wrote. Chapter 167, Why Am I Still Leveling Up? Hint, Rainforest Soul's Favorability plus one plus one plus one. Matthew looked at it and smiled. The two letters were quickly written. Matthew quickly left the Black Banyan Dream and summoned Ella from the Moonlight Woodlands, who had been resting for a long time. He asked her to bring the two letters back to Rolling Stone Town. Then, 
he rested for a while in the Black Banyan Dream Realm. An hour later, just as they were about to set off to negotiate with Blinken, Matthew was surprised to hear such a great piece of news. Hint, since you have successfully completed the advancement, the power limit of your contracted summoned creature, Torin Skeleton, will be passively removed within 24 hours. You can also choose to manually remove the limit in advance to recover more of the Torin Skeleton's original power. Is there such a thing? I was the one who restricted Peggy's strength. Why didn't we know about this when we signed the contract? Matthew was stunned. He did not hesitate. He chose to cancel the limitation manually. A little earlier. Another morning arrived in Rolling Stone Town. The sky lit up. Pedestrians shuttled to and fro on the street of farmers. Housewives or old people carrying baskets walked and stopped in front of the stalls, saying good morning to each other, asking about the price, and occasionally chatting. The streets were filled with voices. At a stall selling white radishes at the corner of the street. The stall owner, Mary, was tidying up the vegetable stall. Suddenly, her vision blurred, and the two white radishes disappeared into thin air. Ding! A few loose coins landed on the stall. Mary accepted the money as if nothing had happened. She turned to her husband, who was cleaning the donkey cart, and said. That invisible person actually came to buy white radishes today. The husband asked in a daze. Haven't our white radishes always been delicious? Mary shook her head and said. He bought it once two years ago, but he hasn't bought it since. He probably doesn't like it himself. Perhaps there was a guest at the invisible person's house today, and the guest liked it, so he bought it. The husband put down the brush in his hand, hugged Mary's waist from behind, and praised. You're really smart. Mary was proud for a while, then she seemed to have thought of something and said seriously. So don't think about fooling me. I heard that you've been getting close to that slut Jenny recently. If you get caught, humph. The husband trembled and repeatedly expressed that he wouldn't. Mary kissed him contentedly. The sun gradually rose. Not long after. A tall shadow appeared in the alley next door. Peggy carried the basket and counted the dishes she had bought the day. White radish, carrot, beef, beef eyes, beef liver. The recipe that Sif mentioned should only need these ingredients. Not long after. She walked briskly back home, only to find that the kitchen was already flaming. She walked over and saw that Sif, who had stayed the night before, was cooking a pot of delicious soup. Peggy asked curiously. What soup are you making? Baby. Sif pulled up her chef's dress, which had been enlarged by who knows how many sizes, and raised her spoon. She turned around and smiled. I made soup with the fish jelly and mushrooms that I ate last night. By the way, didn't I always say that I wanted to try to make a dish that even the undead could taste? I added something special to the soup today. Do you want to try it? As she spoke. She scooped a bowl of soup for Peggy. Peggy took the soup and stuffed it directly into her chin, ignoring the boiling heat. Unlike Soldier. The hot soup flowed down her neck, but before it could seep out or drip out, it was instantly evaporated by her soul fire. She even burped like a human. The soup is not bad. Unfortunately, I still can't taste it. Peggy looked at Sif's disappointed eyes and patted the girl's shoulder. Don't be discouraged, baby. You're already very good. When Matthew comes back, your cooking will shock him. Ha ha ha, I can't wait to see that scene. However, in the next second, Sif suddenly widened her eyes. Peggy didn't realize what had happened. What's wrong, Sif? Sif pointed at Peggy's chest and said. There was a light there just now, and then you seemed to be completely different. Peggy looked down. She realized that her chest was shining with a bright white light. I'm going to level up. Peggy was overjoyed. Ever since I followed that loser Matthew, I haven't leveled up. What's going on today? I can feel that surging power. Wait, could it be because of this bowl of soup? Sif waved her hand, indicating that she didn't know anything. Peggy was about to get another bowl. However, all of a sudden, her chest emitted a white light again. This bowl of soup of yours actually has such a powerful effect that it can let me advance two levels in a row. Peggy exclaimed. Sif was also shocked. The two of them looked at each other, not knowing what to say. After a while, two more white lights appeared on Peggy's body. Why am I still leveling up? Peggy grabbed Sif's shoulder in ecstasy. Child, we might have discovered a huge secret. 
That's your fish jelly mushroom soup. It can allow the undead to level up quickly. We're rich, baby. I have to share this good news with the stingy Matthew. Oh, Matthew isn't here, forget it. I'll just ignore him. I'll secretly level up and give him a surprise later. She had a party dancing between the kitchen and the living room. Suddenly, she heard someone knocking on the door politely. Sif pushed the door open. There was an owl outside. Chapter 168, This is my way of negotiating. Rolling Stone Town, Lija's Manor, Study Room. Wearing a sleeping robe, Riagar yawned as he pushed open the door from the corridor and entered. As expected, an unbelievably handsome guy was already neatly dressed and sitting at his desk, waiting for him. Wait, I'll get Madame Wesley to make me a pot of coffee. As he spoke, Riagar poked his head out from the side door of the study and called out the maid's name. When he took the coffee from the servant and walked slowly to the table, Zeller had already placed a letter in front of him. Matthew's letter. Zeller said. Who? Riagar held his coffee and blew gently, his face full of confusion. Matthew, your magic consultant. Zeller reminded. Riagar looked extremely surprised, but his expression was too exaggerated. Wait. I have a magic consultant. The guy who applied for a month of paid leave on his first day at work. Zeller smiled. I helped him with his application. Riagar sat down on the soft chair and took a sip of the hot coffee. At the same time, he said in a muffled voice, I knew you were involved. What did the letter say? He took another big gulp of coffee. He might have to continue taking leave. Zeller hadn't finished his sentence. Riagar spat the coffee out. The coffee spilled on half of the desk. Sure, but he won't be getting any salary. Riagar said indignantly, A while ago, Doolin and the others asked me if I needed them to recommend a magic consultant. I said that my residents already had one and declined their kindness. Recently, I have a few magic questions that I can't find anyone to ask. Zeller handed over a clean white handkerchief. Perhaps you can write to him. There's no need. Write back and tell him to play as long as he wants outside. It's best if he never returns to Rolling Stone Town. Riagar complained as he wiped the table. His eyes were filled with resentment. Seeing this, Zeller coughed lightly and added, Matthew also mentioned in his letter that he was in a bit of trouble. Riagar revealed an expression of I knew it. I knew that necromancers are troublemakers wherever they go. Zeller retorted, but he's been planting trees in Rolling Stone for three years and has never caused any trouble. Riagar snorted. Seeing that he couldn't win against Zeller, he shouted outside, Madam Wesley? Madam Wesley? Get me another cup of coffee. His voice was very loud, but there was still no response from the corridor. Damn it, Madam Wesley's hearing is getting worse. I'll have to fire her sooner or later. Riagar cursed and increased his volume. After a while, a sturdy old woman walked over from the corridor. She carried a coffee pot and poured another cup for Riagar. Madam Wesley. Riagar said loudly in her ear. Wipe the table, then ask Mason to wake Sif up. If Sif isn't in her room, ask Mason to find that damn Torin skeleton. Tell her to bring Sif back to the Legia's residence before noon, understand? Madam Wesley nodded slowly. After her packing up. As she carried the things out, she suddenly said to the Lord. Riagar, lower your voice next time. My ears can hear you very clearly. Riagar turned around and sneered at Zeller. The deaf always think their hearing is very good. With that, he raised his voice and said to Madame Wesley, Madame Wesley, since you always organize the maids to play cards during lunch break, I've decided to lower your salary. The old woman quickly revealed a blank expression. What are you talking about, Riagar? I can't hear you clearly. Speak louder. Riagar shrugged and suddenly whispered. I saw your husband and your son walk into a brothel on Waterpipe Street with their arms around each other's shoulders yesterday. The old woman immediately rolled her eyes at him. You're already in your forties. Don't joke around like a child. My husband died more than three years ago, and you were the one who presided over his funeral. After saying that, she took her things and left without looking back. See, I knew she was pretending to be deaf. She just wants to be lazy and not work. Riagar cursed hatefully. I'll fire her next week. Zeller laughed. You've been saying that for two years. Everyone knows you can't fire MRS. Wesley. She watched you grow up. Riagar blew on his coffee expressionlessly. 
I'm serious this time. Speaking of which, what about this letter? Matthew is in trouble, Zeller reminded. I think we need to help him. Why? Riagar asked. He's very smart and excellent, Zeller said. The only thing is that he's too young. That's why we can help him. Don't forget, he's someone that Ronan has chosen. Riagar was silent for a moment, then nodded and said, Well, tell me, what kind of trouble did he run into? I'll provide help depending on the situation. After saying that, he took another big gulp of coffee. Zeller suddenly stopped talking. After Riagar swallowed all the coffee, he asked curiously. Why didn't you say anything? I'm waiting for you to finish drinking. I'm afraid you'll spray it all over again. Zeller joked. Because the problem Matthew encountered was Blinken of the Dragon Lich Sect. Chapter 169, This is my way of negotiating. Riagar's eyes widened. He looked at the cup in his hand and said self-deprecatingly. Fortunately, you have foresight. Otherwise, I'm afraid I would have to change into pajamas. So, that kid went out and provoked a legendary mage. Zeller corrected him. Half-legend, peak of tier 5, level 20. Blinken has been a half-legend for many years. I guess the reason why he hasn't been able to break through is related to the Dragon Lich sect. If he can't advance to a Dragon Lich, he might never be able to advance to legend. Riagar said. Even so, you're trying to persuade me to take the initiative to provoke a fifth-tier mage, and it's the Dragon Lich sect with a great background? If you weren't a warlock yourself, I would have suspected that you were seduced by that kid. Zeller said calmly. We've killed quite a number of tier 5 mages before. Back in Purgatory, we all emu that the gap between those below the legendary realm wasn't that big. If we were to prepare carefully, tier 5 mages would actually be very weak. Seeing Zeller's expression, Riagar's heart skipped a beat, and an expression of resistance appeared on his face. Damn it, it's happening again. I don't want to listen to you now. He tried to cover his ears. However, Zeller pulled them away mercilessly. No, you have to listen. This is very important. In the letter, Matthew mentioned that he had encountered the Dragon Lich Cult and Blinken in the rainforest south of Marshwater City, and there had been some conflict between the two sides. In the letter, he described his follow-up plan in detail, hoping that we could point out the shortcomings of his plan. His first step was to negotiate with Blinken. See, this is what I admire most about him. Not only did he know how to write to us, but he also knew how to try to negotiate with the enemy first. Most boys at his age were idiots. They only knew how to fight and be jealous. He knew that violence meant risk, so it should always be the last resort to solve problems. I'm willing to help a young man with such a bright future. I believe you are the same, Rigor. Riagar couldn't help but nod. However, he immediately felt troubled. So, who should we send? Richard? He kept saying that he had already retired, so it was impossible for him to take action over such a small matter. Doolin and Asma had just returned to Rolling Stone Town a few days ago. They didn't know Matthew and didn't like necromancers. It was definitely not appropriate to send them. Lee Wiki, on the other hand, has been idling around Matthew's forest since we blew up all the passages to the Underdark, complaining that he was bored. I really don't know how he trained his chi. There must be something wrong with this monk's commandments. Zeller crossed his arms and said confidently. Lee Wiki, and you. If the negotiations failed, then both sides would most likely end up in a fight. And if we want to kill a tier 5 mage, Lee Weezy alone is not enough. Although Matthew mentioned in his letter that he had a tier 5 child of the jungle and an arcana machinist whose combat power was unknown, I didn't have any confidence in them. Therefore, I can only ask you to take action. Riagar immediately jumped up from his chair. I'm the lord of Rolling Stone Town. Do you think I'll go through fire and water for that kid just because he wrote me a letter? It is precisely because you are the lord of Rolling Stone Town that you should consider the future of Rolling Stone Town. Zeller said seriously, the world is changing, rigor. The peace of the past is gone. When Doolin and Asma came back, they told you about their encounters overseas. The lock of civilization that Matthew told us about is being broken, and the ambitions of the people are getting bigger and bigger. I suspect that in the next 20 years, many wars will break out on this continent. Bion City and Julia City are showing such signs. Even if Ronan could return from the astral plane, his true foundation was still in Jembe. And Rolling Stone Town needs a guardian, 
an archmage that we can trust. You and I both know Matthew's potential and now, the opportunity is right in front of you. Believe me, Rigor, there is no better investment than helping a future master currently in need. Riagar revealed a struggling expression. Damn it, Zeller, I knew this would happen. I was almost convinced by you. It was always like this. If you can give me another reason, I'll go. Zeller smiled faintly. You are the most idle person among all the higher UPS in Rolling Stone Town. Is this reason enough? Riagar sat on the chair dejectedly. All right, I'll go. Be careful. Remember to remind Lee Wiki. Zeller untied two frog dolls from his waist and handed them to Riagar. I know you're not afraid of necromancers, but nothing is absolute. Riagar took the doll and laughed at himself. I knew I couldn't hide it from you. I've been watching you, Rigor. Zeller said gently, I know that you spent a lot of effort to cultivate that ability for revenge. It is the nemesis of necromancers. This is also one of the reasons why you allow Matthew to hang around you, isn't it? Riagar hung one of the dolls on his waist and shook the other one. I'll give it to Lee Wiki, but he might not need it. Right, how should we get there? This place is too far away from the rainforest. The eastern giant eagle can't carry the two of us at once. Chapter 170, This is my way of negotiating. Zeller laughed again. The owl that Matthew sent to deliver the letter is a high-level blessed nature soul of the goddess of moonlight. When there is moonlight tonight, she will bring you into the kingdom of the goddess of moonlight. After that, Matthew himself will provide the goddess with a coordinate anchor point. You can directly teleport to his side, but the price is that he will owe the goddess of moonlight a favor. This is the cunning part of this kid. He only explained his plan to us and asked for suggestions in the letter. He had no intention of asking for help. However, he wrote down the instructions for us and even told us the price he paid. Look, what a cunning and thick-skinned kid. He already knew how to make full use of his connections. So at his age, what were you doing, Rigor? Facing Zeller's question. Riagar replied without hesitation. Ah, I was still in Ponytown at that time. I fought with the bastards from the Turtle Gang every day. Occasionally, I would fight with others because of young and beautiful girls. As he spoke, he suddenly felt that something was wrong and hurriedly stopped. Zeller couldn't help but laugh. Hint, your contracted summoned beast, Torin Skeleton, has leveled up to LV-13. Peggy had mastered a series of new abilities. Is she only one level higher than me again? However, when he was level 5, Peggy was level 9. Matthew was a little confused. He had signed the most ordinary undead contract with Peggy. If there were a seal, it would definitely have nothing to do with the contract. This kind of incomprehensible thing could only be attributed to the strangeness of Peggy herself. Anyway, she had many strange things about her, so this one was not a big deal. Maybe it wasn't a seal, but my advancement or other actions activated the potential in her body. Matthew collected his thoughts. At this moment, the four of them were standing in front of the throne, receiving Suya's blessings. Beams of white light descended. Suya sat upright on the throne, her expression as if she was sacred and inviolable. After coming out of the small forest, she carried herself with an unbelievably elegant and holy temperament. This strong contrast was really impressive. Matthew believed that she would take the opportunity to humiliate him when she blessed everyone. Therefore, he held his breath and gritted his teeth. However, the blessing ceremony was soon over. None of the rubbing, stepping, and kicking that Matthew had expected came. This made him heave a sigh of relief, but at the same time, he also felt a sense of loss. When he left the Black Banyan Dream Realm, Matthew turned around and glanced at Suye, who was sitting on the throne. The latter's face gradually became blurry. In the midst of the haziness, Matthew seemed to see her smile at him. Then, the scenery in front of him began to blur. A gentle force pushed him out of the Black Banyan Dream Realm. Morning, at the edge of the Bitter Water Swamp. Lumiere bent down and carefully examined the marks on the ground. They're moving very fast. They should have reached the depths of the swamp by now. There's no sign of fighting nearby. Strange, such a huge commotion. Could it be that they didn't attract the undead in the swamp? Matthew said solemnly, Blinken is a powerful necromancer. It's normal for him to have a way to appease the undead. What I'm curious about is why he's heading in this direction. Could it be that the Bitter Water Swamp is related to the Dragon Lich Cult's search for the Dragon Tomb? Zioyi pondered and said, 
I've also heard a little about the former owner of the Bitter Water Swamp. The necromancer named Danya was the city lord of Bian City for the last two generations. She was an archmage who was officially registered in the Alliance. She was considered a very decent necromancer, so she probably didn't have much contact with Blinken. Matthew nodded and said, No matter what, we have to catch up to Blinken first. Everyone, be careful. We can follow their footsteps when we enter the swamp but try not to step on their footprints. Experienced army masters would leave a few terrifying magic traps in the footprints of their own troops. Many trackers died because of this. At Matthew's signal, Lumiere took the lead. He pushed aside a patch of reeds and followed the footprints. Matthew, Bobo and Zihuhi followed in one after another. They didn't walk far when a zombie suddenly emerged from the haystack in front of them. As soon as she saw Lumiere, she couldn't help but rush over. Just as Lumiere was about to attack, Matthew shouted in a low voice, Retreat! Lumiere did not hesitate and quickly dodged. Matthew began to chant a spell in a low voice. Spell, comforting the dead. Under Matthew's incantation, the zombie gradually lost its desire to attack. She staggered to the side of the crowd until everyone had passed, and she followed behind them. Do you know that zombie? Bobo asked. Matthew looked at Miss Zombie, who was at a loss and sighed softly. We met once at night. Zihuhi and Lumiere were instantly shocked. Matthew quickly pointed at Bobo and explained, she was also there that night. Bobo seemed to recall something and nodded her head vigorously. Yes, yes. I was there too. As a result, Zihuhi and Lumiere were even more shocked when they heard that. After a long time. Only then did the two of them come back to their senses. Zihuhi coughed and awkwardly changed the topic. Mr. Matthew, I see that there are still many undead along the way. If we keep using the peaceful method, I'm afraid it will affect our speed of pursuit. Matthew waved his hand. It's fine. I won't appease them any more. If there are any more undead, I'll use this to open a path. As he spoke, he took out Ursul's reprimand from his inventory and held it tightly in his hand. This time, the two of them only glanced at the black and long whip and did not say anything. Ten minutes later. Outside the swamp, on a slightly raised highland. A muscular dragon blood warrior was leading four dragon cult disciples and seven to eight ground fire dragons to patrol the surroundings. It seems that Blinken has set up a sentry post to guard against pursuers. In the reeds not far away. Zihuhi, who was the first to discover the sentry post, whispered, What should we do? Should he go around them? Mr. Matthew. Matthew said. Of course, we have to kill them in one go. Zihuhi was stunned. But didn't you say that you wanted to negotiate first? Matthew smiled and patted Lumiere and Bobo's shoulders. This is my negotiation method. As he spoke. He was the first to rush out of the reeds. His body expanded rapidly, and in the blink of an eye, he turned into a moon bear. Roar. The moon bear growled as it ran. Instinct casting. Vine spell. At that moment, two vines with barbs quickly grew from the ground and entangled the dragon blood warrior tightly. Chapter 171, Forbidden Spell, Heavenly Sphere of the Death. Dragon Blood Warrior. This was a special profession that obtained the gifts, strength, resistance, or curses of the dragon through rituals such as dragon worship and bathing in dragon blood. Within the Dragon Lich sect, they had a complete set of procedures for nurturing dragon blood warriors. These mass-produced dragon blood warriors were not as powerful as those heroes who relied on their own strength to kill dragons and bathe in dragon blood. However, they were still considered powerful among ordinary professionals. The dragon blood warrior trapped by the vines was quite powerful. He had a profession level of level 14, and the dragon wings on his shoulder armor meant that he was ranked second in the dragon lich sex internal level. Which was the dragon wing level? According to Zaihi's introduction, the internal hierarchy of the members of the Dragon Worship Sect was divided into Dragon Claws, Dragon Wings, Dragon Teeth, and Dragon Souls. This could be easily identified from the clothes they were wearing. Just as the Moon Bear was about to attack. Matthew saw the Dragon Wings on the shoulders of the Dragon Blood Warrior emit circles of black magic light. In the blink of an eye, the green vines that were originally wrapped around his body quickly withered as if their life force had been sucked out. In addition to the Dragon Blood Warrior's own resistance, it allowed him to get rid of the vines easily. The dragon blood warrior did not retreat in the face of the moon bear's menacing attack. Instead, he quickly removed a shield of the same height from his back. Then, he charged at Matthew. Bang! 
A dull thud was heard as the moon bear slapped the shield. The wooden shield produced an unpleasant scraping sound, but the dragon blood warrior only staggered back half a step. Then, he recovered his strength faster than the moon bear. In the next second, the dragon blood warrior let out a low shout, and the muscles all over his body swelled up. The mud in the swamp was suddenly kicked back by him. Puff! A simple and unadorned shield bash hit the moon bear's chest. If it weren't for the fact that the moon bear's overall attributes were a lot stronger than ordinary brown bears, he would have been stunned by this shield bash. I didn't expect him to be a guardian. How rare! A trace of regret flashed through Matthew's heart. But the next moment, he didn't hesitate to pounce again. The moon bear and the dragon blood warrior clashed for several rounds, but there was still no winner. At this moment, Lumiere and Bobo also followed suit and launched a surprise attack on the four dragon worshippers. The group of earth fire dragons roared and spat out flames that did not differentiate between friend and foe. For a moment, the temporary sentry post was in chaos. Matthew remained calm throughout. He did not lose his mind because of the passionate melee with the dragon blood warrior. Instead, he was always looking for an opportunity. In the seventh round, Moon Bear pretended to repeat the same trick. The Dragon Blood Warrior naturally had no intention of retreating. He raised his shield and rushed over. However, at this moment, Moon Bear rolled to the side agilely. The Dragon Blood Warrior's momentum was too fierce, and he revealed a flaw. Matthew seized the opportunity to slap him, but the other party was very experienced. Perhaps he had predicted Matthew's attack trajectory. In a flash, the dragon blood warrior raised his shield horizontally and once again blocked Matthew's bare paw. However, this time, he lost his balance and rolled backwards after taking Matthew's palm. And in the few seconds that he rolled on the ground, the dragon blood warrior's weakness was exposed. A low-key saber light flashed. The dragon blood warrior's body was still rolling on the ground. However, his head was held firmly in the arms of a skeleton wearing a black and red cloak. Matthew successfully cooperated with Soldier to kill the Dragon Blood Warrior. He did not delay and directly attacked the group of deformed Earth Fire Dragons. Soldier's one on one assassination ability was very strong, especially when someone created a sneak attack environment for him. Every time he attacked, he would land a critical hit. However, when faced with a creature like the Earth Fire Dragon, he had a lot of trouble. Matthew saw him frantically moving around the Earth Fire Dragon. His short knife was like the wind stabbing the earth fire dragon until it roared and was covered in wounds. However, it did not die. Even though the blade was dipped in poison, the resistance of the earth fire dragon was extremely high. This bit of poison could not affect them too much. On the other hand, soldier had to be very careful. Be it the flames of the earth fire dragon or that fat body, once they touched soldier, his small and weak skeleton body would be easily damaged. Ten breaths later. Lumiere had already snapped the necks of the four dragon worshippers. From the clothes they were wearing after falling to the ground, it was not difficult to tell that these people were just cannon fodder at the lowest level, which was the dragon claw level. In order to end the battle quickly, Matthew had planned to transform into the winged dragon wind god and coordinate with Bobo. However, he suddenly changed his mind. In the next moment, he gently patted the magic bag. A sweet-looking ghost appeared in front of him. Go, kill them. Matthew gave the drifter an order. The drifter nodded gently. Then, she flew to the top of the ground fire dragons. The ghost floated gently for a few seconds, and her beauty collapsed at a speed visible to the naked eye. Even Matthew, the owner, could not bear to look at the scene. In the next second, a sharp cry burst out from the drifter's body. The cries were mournful, sharp, and unusually sorrowful. They had a very strong spiritual penetrating power. Even Lumiere and Bobo were nearly affected. And the few ground fire dragons suffered the worst. Chapter 172, Forbidden Spell, Heavenly Sphere of the Dead After a round of crying, all the ground fire dragons were stunned on the spot. The drifter gracefully sank down. During this process, her looks were recovering at an extremely fast speed. Miss Drifter lightly walked past a ground fire dragon, and with a wave of her hand, the soul of a simple-minded ground fire dragon was caught in her palm. Hint, your summoned creature, the drifter, has used its ability, sad cries of death. The ground fire dragon's immunity failed, intelligence, perception, and will, and they all entered a state of absent-mindedness. In this state, the drifter could activate the second part of the skill, taking soul. In other words, 
she could directly cross the barrier of the spiritual realm and take away the souls of the absent-minded. The drifter's movements were very nimble. After a few rounds, the souls of the seven ground fire dragons were all captured by her. She obediently sent these souls to Matthew. Matthew immediately took out a bottle that was usually used to hold pills from his luggage. After emptying the pills, he chanted the most basic soul seal spell. The white smoke slowly dissipated. Very quickly. These weak souls were successively stored in bottles by Matthew. On the ground, the soulless ground fire dragon was dying rapidly. Three minutes later. They were completely dead. Seeing this scene, the other three did not make a fuss. After all, Matthew had always been publicly known as a necromancer. If he kept relying on his shape-shifting transformation to win, it would be even stranger. This should be a rear guard post. Zioli, who had been nowhere to be seen during the battle, appeared immediately after the battle ended. He attentively searched the surroundings and reported. I just found a mini-alarm spell nearby, but the source of the alarm is not the members of the sentry post. It seems that Blinken already knows of our arrival. Matthew nodded. It was unrealistic to chase after a great mage without the latter knowing. If Matthew wanted to negotiate with Blinken, he had to let him know that he was chasing him. Matthew had to show a certain amount of strength, or he wouldn't have a chance to negotiate with Blinken. From the way the sentry post was set up in a hurry, he seemed to be in a hurry to do something and didn't seem to be in the mood to pay attention to us. Zioli speculated, if that's the case, then there must be quite a few sentries along the way. Their purpose is not necessarily to stop us, but to slow us down as much as possible. Matthew agreed. Therefore, he seized the time to search the corpse. It was a pity that the lower class of the Dragon Lich sect looked very poor. They must have handed over all their money to the cult. Even the Dragon Blood Warrior with the Dragon Wings only had seven or eight gold coins on him. Matthew had no choice but to order Soldier to take off the clothes, belts, underwear, shoes and so on from the corpses. It wasn't that he was stingy. There were simply too many undead in the cemetery at home. Most of them did not have any decent clothes or equipment on them, so... Matthew was shopping on their behalf. The group continued to move forward. However, the deeper they went into the swamp, the harder it was to walk. In the afternoon, it was even more foggy. They couldn't even see their fingers when they stretched out their hands. They couldn't even tell the direction, let alone give chase quickly. At this time, it was scary walking around the swamp. If one stepped into a pit, it would be extremely dangerous. Even for professional adventurers, there was a risk of death in the muddy swamp. Matthew was not in a hurry. He held his breath and urged everyone to move forward slowly. Because of the thick fog, the sunlight was greatly weakened, and the drifter had more room to move. Spectres were the most comfortable in the swamp. The drifter was lightly exploring the path ahead, pointing out the possible mud or traps ahead. Just like that. Although they stumbled, they did not lose track of the Dragon Lich sect. Three hours passed. They were already deep into the swamp, but they didn't encounter many undeads along the way. They only killed three sentry posts of the Dragon Lich cult. Each sentry post was stronger than the last. The last one was even equipped with two archers. If it weren't for the fact that Matthew had Soldier and the Drifter, two elite assassins, these two archers hiding in the tree would have caused them a lot of trouble. Finally, after a fierce battle, only the unlucky Bobo was hit by an arrow on her knee and helmet. Her armor was very strong, but the archers weren't mediocre either. The arrows they shot were extremely powerful, leaving bruises on Bobo's forehead and knee. This made her extremely angry. She threatened to blow up the Dragon Lich Sex Lair on the spot. And in these three battles, the most outstanding performance was undoubtedly Matthew's new employee, the Drifter. Spectres were semi-invisible, had fast movement speed, and could kill without blinking. They also had two incredible abilities, physical damage immunity and death-seeking whales. This allowed the Drifter to enter the Dragon Lich Sex army as if no one was around. After killing a few times, she would be able to completely disrupt the enemy's formation. What followed was naturally a happy harvesting time for Matthew's group. Seeing this scene, Matthew was very pleased at first, but he soon felt a headache. Even though there was a strong worker, Matthew's lineup was less than satisfactory. Putting aside the zombies and skeletons that were cannon fodder, among the contract summons. Peggy was a logistics team leader who had worked hard for many years. Matthew was usually unwilling to send her to the battlefield to fight the enemy head-on. Chapter 173 Forbidden Spell, 
heavenly sphere of the dead. Fully had a strong physique, but he was not tactful enough. He asked for overtime pay every time he appeared, which Matthew loved and hated at the same time. Soldier? Assassin? Drifter? And an assassin? Matthew looked around and realized that he was the only one left who could be considered a fighter or a tank. In the future, do I need to tank the enemies for my creatures to ambush them from behind? The thought of such a scene coming true made his head ache. I'm already at the third tier now. When I go back and learn spells, I can start learning how to make dark warriors. In the future, if I don't have seven or eight dark warriors with me, I'm not leaving. Even so, Matthew had gained a lot from these few battles. Not only did he obtain a certain amount of money, but he also still had the mission to expel or kill the Dragon Lich Cult members. These dead members of the Dragon Lich Cult contributed two new spells to Matthew. Magic Trap, you can use a string to create a circle with a radius of two meters on the ground or floor. When you finish casting, the string disappears and turns into an invisible magic trap. After that, when a person or creature, no larger than the trap, steps into the trap, the rope will automatically fly up and firmly bind the person or creature. At this time, the target will have to undergo a round of dexterity check. If the target passes the dexterity check, your magic trap will be ineffective, and the target will leave safely. If the target did not pass the dexterity check, they would be suspended in midair and hung upside down until the spell ended. Currently, your magic trap can last for 72 hours. After triggering, the spell will last for 6 minutes, depending on the target's condition. Dot. Human immobilizing spell, immobilizing any human in your field of vision. The target needs to undergo a round of perception check. After successful immobilization, the effect lasts for a maximum of 2 minutes. During this period, you can do anything to the target except attack. Once you attack the target, the target will be freed from the frozen state. Remarks, four times a day. Of these two spells, the magic trap was only average and had a certain use, but the human immobilizing spell was really good. The success rate of this spell was actually not high, but it had the advantage of fast casting speed and short incantation time. Even without the support of supreme magical skills, it was still very suitable for a quick cast. If the target were hit, then it would be like a lottery one. Even though the immobilizing spell would lose its effect once he attacked the target, two minutes was enough for him to swing his hammer and charge it up to hit the target's head. Most mortal bodies would inevitably die, and ruthless characters who could withstand all kinds of fatal attacks would not be bound by the spell. With the two spells in hand, Matthew was in high spirits. He wanted to find more Dragon Lich Cult disciples to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. However, after taking down the 4th century post. There was no one else in the depths of the swamp. They walked for a full hour. Not to mention the Dragon Lich Cult disciples, they did not even see the undead who should have been wandering in the swamp. As far as the eye could see, there was a thick fog. Uneasiness spread in the team. Something's wrong. It's too quiet. Matthew, I keep feeling that the footprints on the ground are a little deliberate. Should we avoid them first? The one who spoke was the ace spy, Xiu Yi. His face was pale, and he had retreated to the back of the team. Matthew nodded. He was about to order the drifter, who was leading the way, to turn back. Suddenly, they felt the light above them grow darker. Because of the fog, they were not sensitive to light, but at this moment, the sky was completely dark. Everyone felt that something was wrong. They raised their heads and looked up. At this moment, a breeze happened to blow dispersing some of the fog above their heads. Matthew raised his head, and his eyes instantly widened. He saw a terrifying thing above his head. It was a huge ball, as big as a small mountain. It was precisely because it slowly flew over everyone's heads that the light suddenly disappeared. The shape of the ball was extremely terrifying. Everyone could see clearly that at the edge of the ball were undead creatures. Skeletons, zombies, ghouls, and abominations. Countless undead creatures were gathered together by a strange energy. They struggled and pushed hard, but they could not get rid of the attractive force from the center of the ball. Even Soldier and the Drifter couldn't help but fly upwards when the shadow ball flew over the heads of the group of people. Matthew quickly increased his mental support. Soldier turned sideways and hid in the shadow realm while the Drifter hurriedly flew into Matthew's bag. Warning, Blinken has used a Tier 5 spell, Forbidden Spell, Heavenly Sphere of Death. Heavenly Sphere of Death, using a carefully crafted gravitational sphere of negative energy as the core, it provides a powerful attraction force of negative energy, 
kneading a large number of undead into a huge ball shape. If the spellcaster had enough magic power and mental strength, he could use an incantation to raise the celestial sphere high and slowly push it. The celestial sphere would attract all the nearby undead along the way. The caster can throw the celestial sphere at any area, causing an impact force like a negative energy meteorite. This move can be used repeatedly until the celestial sphere disappears. The heavenly sphere of death is constantly releasing negative energy. Deceleration halo, decaying halo, weakening halo, and other debuffs. Special warning, if the living gets too close to the heavenly sphere of death and are caught by the undead on the surface of the ball, they will immediately become the new undead on the heavenly sphere and become part of the sphere's undead shell. Chapter 174, Forbidden Spell, Heavenly Sphere of the Death No wonder the undead in the swamp had disappeared. A flash of lightning flashed across Matthew's mind. At this time, why would he need to read the system message? He instinctively roared, run. The sphere slowly pressed down. Matthew patted his chest, an array of moonlight lit up on his batch. With the help of the moonlight, he quickly turned into a raven and flew away. Lumiere and Zyoyi fled even faster. Bobo, whom Matthew was most worried about, stomped her feet, and flames burst out from the solace of her feet. Her entire body shot to the side like a torpedo. Bang! Bobo crashed into a tree. Fortunately, she had the protection of her helmet, narrowly avoiding the first wave of the sphere's crushing force. However, this was just the beginning. After the huge sphere landed on the ground, all the undead on it extended their hands towards the group. A babbling sound rang in their ears. Everyone who heard it trembled. The huge ball formed by the undead rolled into the swamp. Perhaps it knew that Matthew, Lumiere, and Zyoyi had their own means of escape. The ball's first target was Bobo. After this fall, Bobo's speed had decreased significantly. Although she immediately stood up and took a few steps, the bottom of her feet kept emitting blue light. It was unknown if the circuit was broken, but it looked very unsmooth, which was really worrying. Matthew flew in the air and looked down at the entire situation. Soon, he saw a black-robed figure 50 meters ahead of him. Seeing this, he hurriedly shouted. Lumiere! Save her! He did not need to remind Lumiere because Lumiere was already on his way. He strode out from the reeds at the side and carried Bobo in her armor on his shoulder. At that moment... Lumiere's knees bent involuntarily, but he adapted to the weight in just half a second. Carrying Bobo, he sprinted forward. Lumiere's physique, which was comparable to that of a dinosaur, was fully displayed at this moment. The ball was chasing after them, and the undead reached out their withered hands to grab them. However, he was able to maintain a certain distance from the ball. This gave the undead on the ball a feeling that they were close to their targets. I, I am not rushing you. Bobo said with a pale face but can you be a little faster? I'm a little, a little. Lumiere said calmly, no, I can't run too fast. That won't attract his attention. As he spoke, he looked up at the sky. The raven, who had been following them, immediately turned back after finding that the two were safe and flew southwest of the swamp. At this moment, the fog had already dissipated. Even Lumiere could clearly see the shadow of the black-robed man. It was the priest of the Dragon Lich sect the level 20 necromancer Blinken with the dragon soul class. The air in the sky was turbulent. Matthew's heart was pounding hard, perhaps because the raven was too fragile. He slowly approached the black-robed Blinken and circled three times above his head. Who knew that the latter did not even look him in the eye, which made him feel discouraged. Just as Matthew was about to interfere with the other party's casting. Out of the corner of his eye, he suddenly saw a puddle of wet water under the black-robed man's feet. The swamp was damp and water vapor was everywhere. It was normal for there to be water stains. However, it was obvious that the water stain between the black-robed man's feet was newly formed. It was a little like he had peed his pants. It was not that noticeable, but it did exist. Fortunately, Matthew's perception was extraordinary, and he observed carefully. Otherwise, he really wouldn't have noticed this detail. That's true. In order to deal with us, Blinken even used a Tier 5 Forbidden spell. The fog just now was most likely his cover for the heavenly sphere of the dead. This guy is so cautious. How could he just stand in front of us and cast a spell? Matthew coldly observed Blinken's movements. As expected, he found some parts of the body that were stiff. It's the water mirror image spell. Matthew made a decisive judgment. But to control a spell like the heavenly sphere of death, 
he definitely wouldn't be too far away. Even for a level 20 mage, one kilometer is the limit. He looked around, but the fog had not completely dispersed, so he could not see clearly. He looked back at Lumi and Ri and found that the latter could still handle it, so he breathed a short sigh of relief. We have to find Blinken's true location. Thinking of this, Matthew flapped his wings and landed on a thick branch. After transforming into human form, he did not dare to rest for a moment. He jumped under the tree and knelt on his left knee. The five fingers of his right palm slowly opened and then gently clasped the soft soil. Ability, equalized perception. In an instant, the colors of the world lost all meaning in Matthew's eyes. A brand new worldview slowly unfolded in front of him. Chapter 175, Meteorological Wonders The world that was purely made up of energy fields only had two colors, black and white. However, Matthew felt the huge difference between targets that were equally black or equally white. It was worth mentioning that this difference in perception was also presented in the form of color. It was an indescribable feeling. If described, he could say that they were colorful black and monotonous black. He could clearly sense the elemental field formed by the four basic elements of earth, fire, wind, and water. They maintained the stability of every inch of space in the material world. They were clearly separated from each other, so it was easy to distinguish them. The elemental field was the cornerstone of the existence of the energy field. The layer above was the slightly ambiguous color of the ether field, also known as the magic field. Most spellcasters gathered energy from this field to cast magic. Matthew looked around and saw that the ether field was broadcasting large-scale, high-level spells almost all the time. Meteorite annihilation, time backtrack, chaos calamity, group malicious transformation, reality remodeling, however, these spells were constantly released in the microscopic environment. The magic cycle in the ether field reflected the instability of magic. The effect it had on the real world was minimal, but there would occasionally be unlucky people affected by it. For example, a magic apprentice who was conducting a basic potion experiment did not do anything, but the bottle on the table suddenly fell, which led to a series of disasters, such as a laboratory fire. People might think that the tragedy was caused by the carelessness of the magic apprentices. But in reality, it was also possible that the self-release of a legendary spell under the microscopic level had a rare slight impact on the reality of the material world. This was the wonder of this world. Magic could create, destroy create destruction and destroy creation. Above the ether field was the element field with more units and more colors. The elements were the matrix that formed the domain. They were originally controlled by the ether field. When the spellcaster pried the power of the ether field to release a spell, they would also utilize the elements in an equal proportion. However, once a large amount of elements were gathered in a certain object or life form, the special window of domain was born. Those who mastered the domain could reverse the power of the ether field or even the elemental field from top to bottom, using the elements as a medium. This was the origin of domain ability. The gods manipulated the domains and used their power to become gods, but they also tied themselves to the domains inextricably. Matthew could clearly see the domains he had mastered in the element field. They were either oval or triangular in shape, big or small, but it was more appropriate to describe them as windows. Looking down through the domain, the units in the elemental field could be seen at a glance. If one looked up, everything became blurry. Because that was the real material world. The above feelings only happened in a flash. After Matthew activated his equalized perception, he immediately discovered the abnormality of the ether field and the elemental field. He saw at least six figures nearby, spread out from far to near. A large amount of magical energy was surging between the figures. Water mirror images, all six of them. Matthew was enlightened. The distance between each water mirror image was no more than 500 meters, and the furthest one was only about 2.4 kilometers. Blinken himself was probably near the water mirror image at the furthest end. He constructed a magic energy link between the six water mirrors, and through this link, he could remotely cast spells. This was undoubtedly a huge consumption of his mana, but it was safer. Matthew also noticed that the water mirror image that appeared in front of them was obviously different from the mirror images in the middle that were used to transmit magical energy. This mirror image had real combat ability. Blinken also relied on this terminal combat mirror image to control the heavenly sphere of the death. If he dared to rush forward rashly, the mirror image before them would definitely throw negative energy spells at him. However, the mirror images between the image before them and the last image were different. 
whether it was to save monocosts or to increase the efficiency of energy transmission, Matthew judged from the fluctuations of the ether field that these mirror images were simply utility poles. They had the ability to conduct and guide magic power, but they could not react to the surrounding situation in time. This gave Matthew an opportunity. Blinken summoned this fog not only to cover up the heavenly sphere of the death but also to cover up his water mirror transmission chain. Matthew's heart was burning. Even if a normal tier 3 mage could identify the existence of the mirror terminal, it would be impossible for them to sever the energy transmission chain in such a short period of time. The powerful class characteristics of the envoy of equilibrium were displayed to the extreme at this moment. Matthew turned off the energy field. As a result, his brain felt extremely dizzy. Fortunately, he managed to stabilize his body after swaying a few times, and his spiritual power was slowly recovering. What a huge consumption! My focus has dropped drastically. Matthew was secretly shocked. He didn't know if it was because it was his first time using equalized perception, but in just a few seconds, his spiritual power was almost drained by this ability. According to his current state, without external interference, he would need at least a 15-minute short break to recover his mana. Fortunately, the shape-shifting transformation did not consume mana. Chapter 176, Meteorological Wonders Matthew braced himself and transformed into a raven again, flying toward the second mirror image. In less than half a minute, Matthew successfully found the water mirror image hiding behind the two banana leaves. Facing Matthew's approach, the water mirror image seemed to be oblivious. It just stared blankly in the direction of the first mirror image, and the arcane emblem on its forehead flickered with red and blue. Matthew did not hesitate. He pulled out his crossbow and fired a headshot at close range. Puff! The arrow successfully penetrated the mirror image's head, and a hole as thick as a finger appeared on it. However, the mirror image was not damaged. Water flowed around the hole and slowly repaired it. Matthew noticed. During this process, the arcane emblem on the forehead of the mirror image turned into a bright red light. Is the red light a bad reaction from the energy network? Matthew's heart sank. Blinken had probably realized that he was sabotaging things, so he had to end the battle quickly. The crossbow was useless, so he took out his charged staff and fired five arcane missiles in a row. Matthew deliberately fired five missiles at different locations. The arcane missile mercilessly pierced through the water mirror's head, neck, chest, thigh, and abdomen. Five holes of equal proportion instantly appeared, and water was sizzling out. The red light on the mirror image's forehead flashed even more intensely. But not long after, it completed its self-repair once again. This time, Matthew was a little anxious. His right hand rummaged through his inventory for a while. He was not satisfied with the various items he touched until he touched a bottle of something warm. Matthew finally smiled. In the next moment, he threw out the last bottle of blazing glue and half a bottle of fiery dragon oil. A bright flame flashed. Puff! The wet banana leaves on the side caught fire, and the raging fire instantly burned the mirror image. This time, the mirror image poured out with water. But it was useless. Blazing glue and fiery dragon oil instantly evaporated the mirror image. Hint, you have destroyed Blinken's water mirror image. His spell ritual, super long-range transmission has been destroyed. Warning, the heavenly sphere of the death has lost its controller. It may attack any target nearby on its own. Arsonists' props are still the best. Although these props were sold outside on the market, the quality was really uneven, and the price was even more ridiculous. Most of the time, the blazing glue one bought from profiteers for cheap was expired and could not be burned at all. Even if it started burning, the fire was pitifully weak, and the effect was far from as strong as the arsonist's self-made fire bomb. After noting this down, Matthew quickly turned back into a raven and went back to check on the situation at the battle scene. In the swamp, the rolling ball suddenly stopped. The undead on the shell howled wildly. They kept reaching out to Lumiere, trying to capture him and make him one of their own. However, the ball could only roll back and forth at this moment. It could not reach Lumiere and Bobo at all. It stopped. Matthew succeeded. Lumiere's face was filled with joy. Bobo's face was pale as she patted his shoulder. Then put me down quickly. I'm about to throw up. Lumiere immediately put Bobo down. However, halfway through. The ball suddenly started rolling again, and this time, it was faster and more violent than before. Lumiere was startled but his reaction was excellent. 
he grabbed Bobo with one hand and ran away without caring about her painful cry. The ball chased after him crazily for a while, but it was attracted by a crocodile passing by the edge of the swamp and deviated from its pursuit. Before the crocodile could understand what was going on, it was dragged in by countless hands. The shell made of the undead squirmed violently, and not long after, a crocodile with only half of its skin and flesh was on it. The zombies beside it were still frantically tearing at its flesh and blood. The crocodile opened its bloody mouth in anger, but it was quickly not until only its bones were left. Lumiere and Bobo, who had run a certain distance away, saw this scene and felt a chill run down their spines. But soon, the anger in Bobo's eyes surged out uncontrollably. Matthew. Red light flashed above her head as she roared at the sky. Just then, a raven flew over. Without another word, Bobo pulled out a small black object from her backpack and threw it into the sky. Matthew hurriedly took it with his beak. He looked down and saw that it was a push-type remote control with a lever. That ball over there, can I blow it up? Bobo asked loudly. Matthew held the remote control in his beak and said. You can blow that thing up however you want. Very good. Bobo took out the bomb from her backpack and stuffed the bomb into Lumiere's hands. When it gets close, stuff this into the stomach of that abomination at the top of the shell. Lumiere weighed the bomb in his hand and said readily. No problem. Bobo rummaged around in her backpack for a while and found two larger boxing gloves. Then, she put the medium-sized boxing gloves on her own small boxing gloves and attached the largest boxing gloves to the outermost layer. Chapter 177, Meteorological Wonders After that, the steel glove on her hand that was emitting blue light was the size of a watermelon. Then, she limped toward the meatball. Lumiere hugged the bomb and went around it. Matthew found a high place to land, transformed into his human form, and grabbed the remote control tightly. He didn't say much. At this moment, he only needed to listen to Bobo's orders. Although Miss Machinist seemed unreliable and kept threatening to blow up, there had never been a real explosion. Matthew had full trust in her. After swallowing a few crocodiles lurking in the swamp, the ball was once again attracted by the scent of a living person, and it rolled towards Bobo. Bobo wasn't afraid at all. As she walked, she adjusted the boxing gloves in her hands. The surface of the gloves was silver white and metallic. The blue light that flickered from time to time gave people a quiet and manic feeling. In the blink of an eye. The distance between the two sides was less than 50 meters. Bobo knelt on one knee, pressing her right glove onto the ground. At the same time, a mechanical voice came from the glove. Beginning level 1 charging. In an instant, the blue light on the boxing glove turned from light blue to a light that was almost navy blue. The ground nearby began to tremble slightly. The ball rolled over violently. Lumiere, who was on the flank, seized the opportunity and quickly approached. He stuffed the bomb in his arms into the abomination's mouth. When he turned around and left, he even heard the sound of something breaking his teeth. The ball moved slightly towards Lumiere by half a meter, but the latter was running too fast, and it rolled towards Bobo. On the branch, Matthew's thumb was pressed against the push rod, and his breathing was tight. As the ball rolled closer and closer, the undead let out excited howls, and countless hands reached out to Bobo. However, Bobo's expression was extremely calm. 20 meters. 12 meters. 8 meters. She finally stood up with difficulty and used all her strength to throw a beautiful uppercut at the sphere of the death. As she hit it, she shouted. Matthew. The hysterical roar pierced through the swamps and forests, startling countless birds. Bang! The hill-sized sphere of the death was sent flying into the sky by this uppercut. Matthew stared at the trajectory of the sphere. When he estimated that it was about to reach the highest point, he pushed hard. Two seconds later. The ball exploded silently. The remains of countless undead were scattered into the sky like mud. In the next moment. Inside the sphere of the death, a pitch black. Spinning spherical crystal that looked like a black hole was exposed to everyone. The violent explosion destroyed the crystal and triggered an even stronger airflow fluctuation. In an instant, a black tornado formed at the center of the explosion. The remains of the undead that were about to fall due to gravity were instantly sucked up and wrapped up by the edge of the tornado. Whoosh! 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 A strong wind blew near the swamp. Everyone looked at the sky in shock. The tornado in the sky was getting bigger and bigger. Zombies and skeletons were dancing crazily at the edge of the tornado, accompanied by the heads of Django people, the tails of Nagas, the hearts of trolls, 
and a large amount of flesh and blood. Oh my god! I was actually running with this thing just now. Lumiere raised his head and looked at his hands with lingering fear. The tornado stayed in the air for a few minutes, moving southwest at a high speed with a large number of corpses and branches of the undead. Ten minutes later. Evening Wind Pier. Old Ali was drowsily leaning against a coconut tree. Little Rock, who was playing with the crab, saw the tornado in the distant sky and shouted. Grandpa, Grandpa! Look over there! Oh my God, you won't believe what I just saw! Old Ali was woken up by his grandson and changed his posture unhappily. Don't make a fuss, child. I've lived my entire life. What haven't I seen? Little Rock didn't know how to describe the scene in front of him. He pointed at the sky and repeated, Tornado. Zombies. Zombies. Tornado. Ali was annoyed by his noise. He turned his head to look at the sky. The next second, he jumped up. After staring blankly at the horizon for a few seconds, old Ali suddenly ran toward the dock. Get up, Shen Kunsi. You won't believe what I just saw. The old man shouted as he ran. On the shore, a huge turtle buried its head in the water and blew bubbles contentedly. Don't make a fuss, Ali. I've lived for hundreds of years. What have? I not seen before. But he still turned his head curiously. When he saw the tornado carrying hundreds of thousands of undead passing by in the distance, along with some zombie residue, animal bones and internal organs, resin, or mud, his neck suddenly stretched twenty meters long. I've really never seen this before. Xian Kunsi cried out in surprise and hurriedly dived into the water. He could vaguely hear a voice coming from the water. Wifey, wifey, you definitely won't believe it. One evening. The undead tornado swept across the northern shore of the Gold Coast. It was only at night that the tornado turned from the southwest of Condor City into the Aruna E.C. and gradually disappeared from everyone's sight. Prompt, you have destroyed Blinken's heavenly sphere of death and the negative energy gravity crystal. Blinken's mental power was damaged. Hatred of Dragon Lich Sect plus 10. You have unintentionally created a weather phenomenon, the undead tornado. A few Django people and an elemental watched the entire battle between the brave party, you, and the undead heavenly sphere. They might spread their sight of the battle in oral form. Soon, more and more stories about the undead tornado will appear. Bards will sing about you, young heroes will idolize you, and wealthy forces will consider recruiting you. Your party, Lumiere, Bobo, has southern legends plus one. Your regional legend points, Rainforest plus three, Gold Coast plus one, Swamp City plus one. Naga Race plus one. Very good. You destroyed my heavenly sphere of the death. I'd like to have a chat with you before I'm completely enraged. But I will only give you three sentences. Now, begin. A black shadow quickly appeared in front of the three of them. Blinken said with a sinister expression. Chapter 178, What Class Do Necromancers Hate the Most? In Inder, negotiations were a common occurrence. The people of Inder were so passionate about negotiations that they were obsessed with it. Whether it was a civilized society or an adventure in the countryside, when people encountered conflicts, their first reaction was to choose negotiations. And even if the initial negotiations failed, in most cases, both sides would agree to start a second round of negotiations and add a mediator role in the subsequent negotiations. In Rolling Stone Town, the position of mediator was often held by the town's respected people. In a big city like Julia City, the government even had a special negotiation organization to manage disputes among the people. Matthew had once read the work of a senior mediator, who wrote on the title page. How can we ensure a better resolution of the dispute? There were three things to do. Before the negotiations, one had to ensure that the strength of both sides was equal. During negotiations, use all sorts of methods. After negotiations, don't be too hung up with the outcome. The first two points were easy to understand, but the third point seemed to Matthew to mean something like this. Even though it was the consensus of most people in Inder to use negotiations to solve problems, there were still many people who did not care about ethics. There were also examples in history of people who went back on their words and backstabbed the next day. Therefore, even if the outcome of the negotiations had already become a fact, they had to be more careful and vigilant. This was Matthew's first negotiation. He was facing a level 20 big shot. Although the Blinken in front of him was most likely a water mirror image, the law of death in the morning still left a deep impression on Matthew. It would be a lie to say that he wasn't nervous. 
But at this moment, Matthew knew that he had to muster up the courage to face him. If he showed any signs of fear, this negotiation would be lost. He walked up and maintained a safe distance. He said calmly. There are no dragon tombs in this rainforest. Blinken sneered. Now, the second sentence. Matthew's expression did not change. The internal strife of the sandstorm bandits is most likely a self-directed farce. Blinken was getting impatient. The third sentence. Matthew's heart was slightly stirred. Blinken's reaction was beyond his expectations. He thought that the two pieces of information he had thrown out would at least make the other party refute, but the other party was completely indifferent. Blinken's attitude changed Matthew's train of thought. He reacted quickly and decisively to change the content of the third sentence. I have a legendary existence with me. Blinken wanted to raise his right hand subconsciously, but he stopped before the staff could reach 15 degrees. A legend? Do you think I'm a child? Do you think I am so easily deceived? He stared coldly at Matthew. Seeing the other party's attitude, Matthew finally heaved a sigh of relief. When Blinken was about to raise his staff, he was ready to use his undead body. Soldier and the drifter were already in position. As long as the enemy showed the slightest intention to act rashly, the two immortal assassins would immediately attack. Fortunately, Blinken finally reacted to Matthew's words. Even though the content was still questionable. However, at least there were signs of negotiations between the two sides. There's no point in lying. I don't think it'll be difficult for you to verify my words. Matthew replied calmly. Suspicion flashed in Blinken's eyes. The next moment, he suddenly took out a skull from his pocket. There was a faint soul fire within the skull, which was obviously different from the ordinary undead. Matthew could feel a rich life force. It was rich but very weak as if it could be extinguished at any time. Blinken carefully held the skull in his arms, then gently stroked its forehead and cheekbones, and asked gently, Emma, my Emma, he said they have a legend with them. Hearing Blinken's voice, the skull seemed to wake up. She flew out of Blinken's arms, spun in the air, and landed in his palm. Why didn't I wake up with my lover's kiss this time? My Ken, do you not love me anymore? The skull looked at Blinken with some resentment. Blinken quickly hugged her and kissed her forehead. I'm sorry, baby. I'm just a little anxious. His tone was gentle, his movements were gentle, and even his kiss was filled with love. I like your kiss. It reminds me of when we were still in love. You were so young and radiant back then, but now you're old. The negative energy has corroded your body and brain. Skull Emma said affectionately. Blinken coughed. We can talk about this when we get back, baby. I'm negotiating with someone right now. Is that so? Emma turned 180 degrees, glanced at Matthew and the others, then turned back and said to Blinken, I'm afraid what that child said is true. He has a guardian god on him, and his level is very high. It's probably not something an ordinary legend can do. It's at least a superior legend. Superior legend. Blinken was shocked. There aren't many superior legends in the entire South. Oh, my poor lover, this rotten world has corrupted your flesh, necromancy has blurred your vision. Can't you see the obvious mark on the patroness? Emma asked worriedly. Blinken's eyes shone with a bright white light. After a few seconds, he frowned and said, Ronan. But I heard that he was trapped in the astral plane. Chapter 179, What Class Do Necromancers Hate the Most? Emma persuaded. But he won't be trapped in the astral plane forever. You know what he's capable of. Your current judgment worries me. Promise me, don't let the negative energy continue to erode your brain. It's the sexiest organ in your body and also my favorite. Blinken's facial muscles twitched slightly, but he soon understood. I'll be careful, Emma. The skull looked particularly worried. She turned to Matthew and the others. Let me talk to that child. I'm more suitable to negotiate with normal people than you. Blinken took a deep breath and didn't say anything else. He tacitly agreed to Emma's words. Hello, my name is Emma. What's yours? The skull looked very friendly. Matthew replied politely, Hello, madam. My name is Matthew. Nice to meet you, Matthew. Emma said vivaciously. The world has always had a big misunderstanding about Blinken. In fact, he is a good child, always has been, but he is not very good at expressing himself. When he was still a magic apprentice, 
a few troublemakers had hidden all the frogs for dissection because they hated the dissection class the next day. When Blinken learned of this, he went to them and tried to get them to hand over the frog. The reason was that he did not want his group to fall behind the other groups of magic apprentices. However, the children were too naughty. Not only did they not want to hand over the frog, but they also threatened Blinken that if he exposed this matter, they would turn him into a frog and throw him into the women's toilet. Emma's tone was filled with nostalgia. Matthew realized that this skull seemed to be very important to Blinken, so he played along. What happened after that? Emma sighed. They annoyed Blinken and refused to tell him where they hid the frogs, so the angry young Blinken used malicious transfiguration to turn them all into frogs and put them in the material cabinet in the anatomy class. It wasn't until the next day that the teacher noticed the abnormality. The unlucky, mischievous ones were not cut open, but Blinken received a big punishment. Later, when I found out about this, I took the initiative to talk to him. Only then did I know that he just wanted to take a good anatomy class. How could you say anything bad about such a hard-working child? Matthew was speechless. It seemed that Emma had a very large leeway for Blinken. At this moment, a voice came from behind Matthew. Emma? Are you Ms. Emma? Were you a professor of prophecy at the Pharaoh City Magic Academy? Yes, I remember you giving Mr. Blinken a lesson. As expected, Zioyi immediately appeared after the fight. It seemed like he knew Emma well. Emma replied happily. Yes, I didn't expect that someone would still remember me. After my husband died, I heard that Blinken had defected from the Alliance of Seven Saints. From then on, I was depressed and passed away not long after. But very soon, Blinken dug me out of the coffin and found a way to preserve my memory and wisdom. I'm sorry to meet you like this. Do I look evil? Zioyi whimpered, not knowing how to answer. Seeing this, Matthew calmly changed the topic. As you said, Mr. Blinken used to be a decent person, but what he did today is not so decent. This morning, he used the Book of Blasphemy to pollute the Black Banyan's dream and took away the verdant branch of the soul of the rainforest. After that, he ran amok in the rainforest. The creatures in this area were very uneasy. Everyone was afraid of who he would attack next. This is the purpose of my negotiation. I really hope that this matter can end peacefully. But if Mr. Blinken continues to be stubborn, I'm afraid it will be difficult to resolve the conflict between us through negotiations. Emma immediately said. I will ask him to return the verdant branch, but not now. We still need this thing. As for the Black Banyan dream, I'm very sorry. I promise you that Blinken will never blaspheme the Black Banyan dream again. Did you hear that, little Ken? Blinken revealed a helpless expression. Emma, that kid is threatening me. Emma instantly raised her voice. I asked you if you heard me. You did go overboard this morning. Look at how scared that little fox is. It's already good that I didn't ask you to come and apologize. Blinken said angrily. I understand. After this, I will return the verdant branch. I also promise that I will not profane the Black Banyan's dream realm in the future. Very good. Emma yawned in satisfaction. She said to Matthew. You and Little Ken are both necromancers. You should have a lot in common, so there's no need to be enemies. Now that Little Ken has made a concession, you can have a good talk. Don't be too impulsive, young man. All right, little Ken, I'm a little sleepy. Send me back. Blinken didn't hesitate. He eagerly lifted the skull and kissed it three times before reluctantly putting Emma back into his arms. After Emma left, the warmth on Blinken's face instantly disappeared, replaced by a fierce and vicious face. Brat, don't think I'm as easy to talk to as Emma. I've already given in. I can promise you and the soul of the rainforest behind you that I won't harm the creatures here as much as possible. But I want that piece of land in the west of the rainforest. I need the factory to fulfill my wish, so tell those natives to stay away from my factory. Otherwise, I don't know what will happen. Chapter 180, What Class Do Necromancers Hate the Most? Also, my people and I will be walking around the rainforest for the next period of time. If those ferocious beasts or natives take the initiative to attack me, don't blame me for being ruthless. If you can agree to this, I can give Emma face and stay out of your way for the time being. Matthew knew that this negotiation would not end well. He simply said vaguely. I'm not sure if the soul of the rainforest will accept such conditions, especially after you robbed her, but I'll convey these words to her. Blinken sneered, she will accept it. Brat, 
I don't know what the soul of the rainforest promised you, but no matter how generous the reward is, it's not as important as your life. You're not so lucky to have a flying squirrel be a sacrifice for you, right? Matthew's heart skipped a beat. So, he knew everything that happened in Black Banyan's dream realm after he left. What do you want to do in the rainforest? The Tomb of the Dragon? It doesn't exist at all. He tried to pry more information out of Blinken. However, Blinken only smiled faintly. Don't ask so many questions, kid. Don't do useless things. I've already sent my people away when we were negotiating. As for me, you should know that the person in front of you is just a mirror image. The real me is already thousands of miles away. As he spoke, he turned around and walked away. After ten steps, he suddenly turned around and looked at Matthew solemnly. Forget it. Since we're both necromancers, I'll give you one last piece of advice. Matthew asked. What is it? When you wear a robe with tight cuffs, it's best to always roll up your sleeves to avoid affecting your spell casting. Blinken said seriously. Also, the second button on the inner lining of your shirt is not fastened. Remember to button it immediately. After saying that, his figure immediately collapsed and turned into a puddle of water. Zioyi came over. So, is this negotiation a success or a failure? Matthew did not answer. Instead, he quickly turned around and looked at Bobo, who was enduring the pain. Let's heal the wounded first. The sparkling emitting gloves were removed one by one and thrown into the pool beside the mud. White steam immediately rose from the water. After the three layers of the iron sheet were removed, Bobo's fair, small, and slightly fleshy fist was revealed. No burns, but there are some slight fractures. Matthew carefully examined her hand. As a necromancer, he was a natural surgeon. Not many professions dared to say that they knew bones in front of a necromancer. I've received professional training. How could I be scalded? Bobo blushed and said. But fractures are inevitable. Sure enough, the burden of level 1 charging is still too great for fists and gloves. But you all saw it just now, right? It's really cool, isn't it? Matthew smiled and nodded. Without hesitation, he took out a scroll from his inventory and tore it. The magic ripples were like fish swimming into Bobo's fists and wrists, while some of them flowed along her skin to other parts. Hey! The latter moved her wrist a little and found that the slight fracture on her hand had recovered, and the bruises on her skin had disappeared. Is that a basic external injury healing scroll? Was it expensive? Bobo asked hesitantly. Matthew smiled and shook his head. Seeing the embarrassed look on Bobo's face, he naturally wouldn't tell him that she was actually using an intermediate external injury healing scroll. Fortunately, this thing was not expensive in Bian City. After all, necromancers were all skilled in surgery. This is an intermediate scroll. Zioyi suddenly interrupted. Mr. Matthew, you're so rich. This scroll was sold for more than 120 gold coins in Condor City, and this was under the condition that people generally did not pay much attention to external injuries. Lumi, Ri had no concept of money, so he listened with interest. Bobo didn't seem to have any reaction after hearing that. It was just that the color of the light on her helmet changed, looking very much like the neon lights in Matthew's previous life. Matthew casually explained, I did not buy it that expensively. After saying this, he wanted to pinch his thigh. Why did he only think about buying underwater breathing scrolls from Condor City and selling them inland? Why didn't he do the reverse with Bian City and Jilio City? If what Zioyi said was true, and this scroll that sold for 8 gold coins in Bian City could be sold for more than 10 times the price in the Gold Coast, then Matthew had to open up this trade route that ran through the north and south. Of course, now was not the time to think about this. Even though Bobo's external injuries had been healed, everyone's spirit had been greatly drained after the battle just now. They urgently needed a break to relieve their mental and physical stress. Since the undead in the swamp were all taken away by the tornado, the Dragon Lich disciples had most likely withdrawn. Therefore, in theory, this was the safest place in the rainforest. Matthew and the others found a place to camp. He entrusted Zioyi to stay in the temporary camp and asked Soldier to protect Bobo while he and Lumiere scouted the area. The journey was calm. Just as Matthew had guessed, there was not even a ghost in the depths of the swamp. He then asked Lumiere. If it were you, would you be able to accept such a negotiation result? Lumiere said uncertainly. I don't know. That necromancer is really strong. I can feel that if I were to face him one-on-one, -on -one, 
I wouldn't be his match. 